Hello everyone, my name is Eric Jones. We are going to take a look uh, at a situation where you've been called to your office or had a call to your office or to your to your mobile device and you have a client that wants you to do a landscape design, an irrigation design, any type of garden design uh, for them. And basically what you need to do uh, is, is kind of have a set procedure on how you're going to approach a client like this. Um, design can be a sticky situation with some people and it depends if you're an, uh, solely doing design work or if you're a design build contractor or if uh, you know you're an installation contractor you kind of need to know what goes on behind the lines as I call it when you are uh, completing design work for clients because usually you can um, you can get yourself into a little bit of a, a bind when it comes to, to payment with this and I've always had the philosophy um, about my clients as I do with my employees you can fire a client just as easily as you can fire an employee because there are going to be certain people that you're just not going to to get along with and this client interview will basically uh, um, show you how to uh, approach um, clients especially ones that you don't know that you've actually just received um, you know that phone call or that email wanting you to uh, to do design work for them so Let's go ahead and get started with the lecture. It's entitled Client Interview. So, the interview. And actually, before you do the interviewing, you need to do some screening. You need to ask some questions uh, to your client and um, make sure that they understand your procedures and your pricing and things of that nature that can actually help, um, actually help you land the the design work um, for this particular client. You need to make sure that they understand the services that you can provide and the fees associated with it. I've been burnt once. Uh, well, actually, I take it back. I've been burnt twice on doing landscape design work um, for, uh, for two particular clients, and I make sure that this will never, ever happen to me again. I actually had a situation where... Um, a client that we'd been working for for several years. We'd been doing their lawn care. We'd been doing their weekly maintenance. We had actually done a lot of redos, uh, uh, especially to their backyard. They bought an existing home that was just a few years old, but they wanted it redone. So, so uh, we did a lot of work for them. And the sad thing was, uh, we had a um, uh, an employee that worked for us that was actually doing some side work for this client because we went over there. Uh, one day uh, to mow. I was actually taking the crew over there to mow and I noticed he had some new crepe myrtles and, and some other things planted in the back and, uh, and I was like, well, sir, you know, who, who did this work work for you? Oh, uh, your employee, Andrew, uh, that, that works for you. He uh, he started a, uh, a business and he, he does a lot of stuff for me on the weekends and, and uh, for some other friends of ours. So I was like, whoa, here. Kind of uh, upset me, but long story short, this same client uh, bought another house later on and called us to do a landscape design installation uh, price for us. They built the house new. It's brand new. Uh, so we weren't actually working for the builder. We were working for, for this particular client. And I actually did a landscape design. I did it in Pro Landscape. I did a master plan for them. I did the digital imaging. I had a nice nice poster board that I did for him. I had the, the whole plan because, you know, we had a working relationship with this client. We were going to mow for him. He's like, you know, you guys will just take over the mowing when we move in, but I'd like you to uh, to come up with a design and actually come up with us some, uh, some pricing stuff. So I went ahead and did it. Lo and behold, dropped the plans off. Uh, his wife wasn't there. And that's where I got burned in the first place. And he said, yeah, just just leave this with us. Uh, you know, me and the wife will talk over it over the weekend. We'll give you a call Monday. Well, it went about a week, and I hadn't heard from them. And, um, you know, got a little worried, called them. They wouldn't return a call back. So actually uh, drove by the house and noticed 
that my design was installed just as I had designed it. And I left furious because no one was home at the time. I mean, like I said, it was it was a you know, house under construction. And I actually drove by the nursery that we get a lot of our plants. And they're like, yeah, Eric, you know, we saw your landscape plan come in uh, last week. That was a really good design. Uh, you know, appreciate you uh, putting all these plant materials on here that, that we had. So uh, found out who installed it. It came to be that employee named Andrew that uh, uh, wasn't working for us at the time but was the one that did the crepe myrtles for him in the backyard. So this is why I kind of come up with this this lecture is to help you guys out um, because I don't want to see anybody get burned. And like I said, I got burned another time. We're not going to go over that situation. But when you, when you offer design work, you got to make sure you can get paid. Um, so up front, make sure that they understand the services you can provide and the fees associated with it. Have the client locate their plat or their site survey, or their site plan. It used to be when people built new houses, the banks required them to do a survey. Now they don't do a survey. Well, when they build a new house, they have to for the for the, for the the footers. So uh, you can actually talk to the builder, the homeowner. There's, there's going to be access to that um, site plan because they have to do it with a new house. But when a customer buys an existing house, the banks used to require them to do the survey, and they don't do that. They may do that uh you know in other areas but not here in forsyth county um do i know of that you have to get a survey when you buy an existing house you only have that survey uh for the for the permitting office uh and so they can locate the footers on the house so that would be a good place to get that if they don't have their site survey you can go to you know the geodata websites of the county that you live in and you may or may not be able to pull up um the site survey on that. Some houses that I look up in the Forsyth County geodata, I get enough information on that that I can do, um, you know, the base plan drawing uh, from that. Uh, if not, you know, it may have to go out and actually draw it ourselves. But, you know, surveyors, you know, work reasonable price. Uh, you know, I, most I've ever paid for a survey to do a site plan for me is 300 bucks. And, you know, that's something that you can let the client take care of for you up front plus they'll give it to you right in AutoCAD it'll open up in any of the CAD stations or Pro Landscape whatever you might be using so it may be worth it to have them do that for you if not um, you know drawing it by hand is is uh, or drawing it in CAD from information you collect in the field is not not a bad way to go either but you need that site survey ask them if they've got it and then meet the client at the residence they want landscaped even if it's the new house you know if they're living if they're living in the apartment or, you know, they're living in a rental house while they're building their new house or they're waiting on closing, you need to meet them at the residence that they want landscape, not, not somewhere else. You need to see that property. And hopefully uh, it's somewhere that you can sit down uh, at the kitchen table or, you know, if it's a brand, brand new house and they haven't moved in yet, it might be a little difficult to have. But you, you may, you know, you want a, you know, a quiet place that you could talk to them after you know uh, doing the site visit items to take with you make sure that you have a tape measure I always take a 200 foot roll tape with me and also take a 25 foot tape measure something just clip on my belt and uh, you know take the measurements that I need always be prepared to take measurements if there's no survey provided for you now if it is a job new job new construction house you can always go to the job box and there's going to be a copy of the survey in there. Every house that, that I've ever done, done a landscape design for, new, there's always been a survey in that. I would never take the survey, but I would actually take a picture with my camera phone. And I would have that survey uh, on my phone. And I would go back to the office and actually draw it from there. Make sure you have a camera. Well, everybody now has a camera phone that... Uh, that you can use so you have that make sure you have a compass that you can use to find magnetic north well guess what your phones have the compass apps that you can download uh, as well just like a calculator app or any any type of app that that we could possibly use we can download it to our phones nowadays so we're very lucky uh, in that aspect make sure you have a contract uh, whether or not you're doing it digitally 
through an iPad or something like that, or if you're uh, doing the, the still the carbon copies, there's nothing wrong with that. That gets that hand signature on it. Or if they, you know, they, they sign it electronically using like a tablet. And those tablets are great because you can upload images uh, of previous work that you've done like in Pro Landscape. I love using the Pro Landscape uh, app on my iPad. And have them sign electronically if you've got an iPad. Uh, we're in the age of technology now, so we can do that. But there's still nothing wrong with doing it by hand. And guys, I'll have to admit that every now and then I just feel like doing a landscape design by hand. It's it's artistic. It's fun. I love getting out the the uh, chart pack markers and actually rendering a landscape design with with colored markers or even colored pencils or uh, you know, watercolors. That was fun. That's how I did it uh, in my undergraduate work. It was it was fun to do that. We still had the old blueprint machines that we would run prints. We actually called them black line prints and then use the chart pack markers. I still enjoy that and that's therapeutic to me than, than setting at a CAD station uh, all day long. But make sure you have these items right here with you when you go to the interview. Also, take a portfolio, pictures, and sample designs of previous projects. That could also be on your tablet or iPad. If not, have a nice binder uh, that the client can flip through of pictures of actual drawings themselves and then actually pictures of the landscape design installed so they can see the process. They see the process of you taking it from site inventory and analysis um, to preliminary design or bubble diagrams, planting plan, and then finally a master plan, and then showing projects or pictures of the projects implemented. Have that in, in a uh, tablet or in a nice leather bound uh, portfolio. And also in that portfolio, keep some business cards and keep some brochures uh, about the type of work that you can do because I never just leave one business card with a client. I'm always going to leave, you know, three or four because they may have a neighbor that wants to talk to you as well. Everybody wants to keep up with the neighbors. And especially these new neighborhoods that have been built or still being built, the wives talk, the husbands talk, they become friends. They always talk about who did their countertops in their kitchen. Who did their tile work? They liked that. Well, who did your landscape? Who did your landscape design? Oh, it was so and so. I I've got a card um, in the in the drawer in there. Let me go get you his card or get her card because they just did an exceptional design for us. We're really happy with them. And also leave them those brochures. What we need to get from the client is trust. We need to. Let them know that we're a good person. We need to see that they're a good person. The commitment is what we need. The simple contract uh, is sometimes used to ensure that the client is serious. You want, you want them to, uh, to understand what it's going to cost. And again, guys, that goes back to are you just doing design work? Are you a one-man or one-woman firm that does landscape design, irrigation design, planting design? Are you just, are you, are you the designer or are you the design builder? Are you going to design it and install it for the client? So there's different ways that you've got to price it. Um, and you need to differentiate that with the client. You need that site survey. If not, uh, you need to have it hand drawn. Uh, take a, uh, a larger clipboard, some of the design stores or, you know, that sells art. Uh, supplies will have these larger clipboards that you can uh, take out and actually sketch out the uh, the property. There's nothing wrong with that. Take it back, compare it to what you find on uh, the Geodata websites, and come up with a nice base plan. You need to take photos. A good thing again about a tablet or you know these new fancy um, uh, iPhones and and. Um, some of the other other types I'm, I'm just I as you can tell I'm a uh, I am an Apple person I love the Apple products I do use a PC at my desk but when it comes to tablets and 
uh, phones. I'm an Apple person. Uh, I do like the Mac, MacBook Pros for certain types of software, especially using Adobe Illustrator, um, Adobe Photoshop, and things like that if you're rendering your, uh, your designs that way. It's good to have those. But have those photos. Use your camera phone. Take a bunch. The best thing about it, you can delete them later. When I meet a client, I bet I'd leave with 50 photos of a small property. It might be 75 to 100 if it's a large property because I'd rather have duplicate pictures to make sure I get what I want, come back, download them to my computer, create that folder. Uh, so if I've taken that many pictures, I took a picture of the site survey, I've got my contract that they signed electronically or... Uh, I'll scan it in at the office. I create that folder of that client's name. So I've got all of that stuff digitally right there. But the most important thing that we need to get from the client at this meeting is the next meeting date. We need to let them know, hey, we need to meet 7 to 10 days later. But when you tell them 7 to 10 days later, what you need to do is show them on a calendar Today is such and such date. How about next week? Let's say today is Tuesday. Let's say, sir, ma'am, and I also want to stress that you need to meet with them together. You need to meet with the husband and the wife together. And you need to say, today's Tuesday, such and such date. I'm going to meet with you next Friday. How does that sound? And I'm going to bring you the first preliminary design of this project. Well, well, Eric, we can't meet Friday because our kids got a ball game, but we can either meet Thursday night or Saturday morning. And yes, I do meet clients on Saturdays. I understand working professionals, it's sometimes hard to get them together. So I will make sure that I have either that Thursday evening or Saturday morning free, and I'm going to go talk to them. But I leave there with a definite date of when I'm going to bring them a preliminary design for them to look at. Discussion of the design. Now, again, it's difficult if they're building a brand new house uh, because there may be some other subcontractors there working. Uh, you know, by the time you get called in, the brickwork outside is going to be done. Uh, they might be inside uh, installing hardwood floors. They may be finishing up their trim. They could be painting whatever time. Uh, during the construction that they call you is usually up to the builder or, or, or up to the homeowner themselves. But if it's an existing home, make sure you have that quiet place to sit. You don't want any distractions. You don't want, you don't want the wife having to take care of three little ones. She's not focused because in all actuality, guys, it, we want to make, we want to make the, uh, the wife happy. Mr. Husband's going to be happy if, if his wife's happy. He may question some pricing or whatever, but, you know, if mama's happy, everybody's happy. So you want to make sure that she has the time and the focus to talk to you because it's, 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 it's her home. That's the way, the way the woman looks at it, and I appreciate that. And uh, um, I love letting my wife make decisions about the home because I feel like it's, it's more of her her choice. I want to make her happy because I'm I'm the happiest go lucky guy I think I've ever met. So if I can make her happy, I'm just even that more happier. Um, with the philosophy, you know, if the client has discussed what they want after they've discussed it, then it's time for your expertise to come in. Share your design philosophy, including those portfolio and pictures, etc. The client may just have a property that may not fit to what they're wanting to do you know maybe they're on a slope and there's just no way to do that pool but you could do some type of waterfall garden in, in the back you've got to bring in your expertise because they're hiring you to solve a problem it's the way i always tell my students they're not hiring you to do a landscape design or even an irrigation design they're hiring you to solve a problem and that problem is the blank slate if it's a new house or it's a, uh, a redo if it's an existing house. We're solving their problem. We're solving that problem of them not enjoying their current landscape 
or we're solving that problem of creating that landscape. So we're the problem solver. So if we take that philosophy of we're the problem solvers and that we have our examples to show them and the reasoning why we say why we say we should do this they're going to gain that trust back you know right off the bat with you write down everything it provides helpful reminders but it also lets the client know that you are actively listening so when you're writing things down they tell you what they want you ask them questions you write it down they can see that you are so engaged in what they're talking about that helps gain that trust that we talked uh, a bit ago uh, a few slides ago what do they want it is our job to sometimes help the client know what they want they may have an idea they may not know how to explain it so we must help them figure out what it is that they want again we're the problem solvers when it comes to design work for the most part just listen to what they want without forcing your opinion so i always let them always let them tell me what they want write it down take notes and guys sometimes i like to get there 30 minutes or so before i'm supposed to meet the client that way i can go ahead and be familiar uh, with the property i've got the pictures on my phone i've got a sketch done so when i'm sitting down at the kitchen table with them i can scroll through my phone at the pictures i can show them the sketch after i've listened to what they want and then i'll be like sir ma'am great ideas i love that but your yard your lot here would be more beneficial if we did this because you want to outdo your neighbors you kind of you kind of turn the direction for them. You you tell them that they have a great idea, but you need to say, I'm taking your idea and I'm expanding it to something better and actually help it fit the lot. I hope you guys are understanding what I'm saying. Uh, uh, because some people, they may just be stuck in what they want to do. <coughs> They're going to do it. No ifs, ands, buts about it. But there may be a situation where you just can't make that happen. And that might be the time you say, sir, ma'am, it's probably best that you find somebody else to do this. I just, you know, not comfortable doing what you want to do or, you know, it's just not going to work. Thank you. I'm being honest with you. You know, you may want to call such and such, you know, this company or that company. Because again, it's okay to fire the client. If they have such an idea that's kind of absurd, and not going to work on paper client information we need to find out a little bit about the family we need to see how many children they have and why would you think we need to know how many children they have because some of these neighborhoods that we may be doing landscape designs they may need that extra parking space if they've got three kids or four kids that are going to be driving in a couple of years they may need more hardscapes than they do softscapes so find out how many they have the ages we need to know the occupation of both husband and wife we need to know if there's any allergies in the family are they allergic to certain types of plants or certain uh, smells or any of that nature we need to know about pet do they need a place to walk the dog do they need a fence they need a fenced in backyard for the dog so find out as much information about the family as you can and another thing about with family is our grandparents going to be coming down for the holidays um, is grandma and grandpa going to come and stay two weeks at Christmas or are they going to come and stay two weeks during the summer so again do they need more hardscapes than they do softscapes because think about it if you got grandma and grandpa driving down to spend two weeks you've got three out of the four kids that are driving and you're fortunate enough the client's fortunate enough to have a car for each child mom and dad's got a car so you could end up having six or seven vehicles in a neighborhood that the driveways aren't long enough to fit them all in you gotta you gotta ask them these questions and these are questions that they know the answer to but they've never been asked the questions so they're they're not they're not readily available to give you that information because they've never never thought about it and then 
Ask them what their design goals are. You know, what is it that you're wanting? Are you wanting that outdoor room in the back? Does 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 the wife want a garden? Does the husband want a place to watch the football game? An outside, you know, an outdoor room. That's the new big thing with landscape design. So just ask them what their design goals are. Sometimes it may be just plain and simple, and sometimes it may be, you know, very extensive as an outdoor room with a kitchen and eating area and a living area that allows you to watch television. I've seen it I've seen it all outside. What is what is their lifestyle like? What hobbies do they have? Uh, do they entertain people? Are they always having people over at their house? Again, entertaining means do they need more parking and do they need that outdoor room? Views. We need to point out the views to keep the views to block, and then the inside privacy views. And a lot of times the clients aren't going to know. I've actually seen it where we've designed for a client and the client didn't know they had the most wonderful views of the of the mountains because the property had some larger trees, larger cedars that came up and you know they were fond that they had the, the trees to the back of the property, but we're like, you know something, if you cut down you know this old maple that doesn't look too good we could open up a view of 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 the mountains in the background that's you know priceless you know if you want a shade tree let's put one in the front let's open up this back so you can see the blue ridge mountains or pilot mountain or sartown mountain any of those wonderful gorgeous views they might not know it that they have that view so it's up to us to point it out to them we also need to Tell them that the neighbor over here, um, you know, with, with certain plant material, we could block out the camper that he keeps parked in the back or his woodshed. Point out all these things that need to be blocked. And then what they may not even know about is the, ins uh, uh, the inside views. You know, looking out, what can we do? Again, if we remove that maple tree, we can open up the view to the mountains that you could see from your dining room table kind of thing or the living room in the back or from the patio inside views looking out is just important and that's why you need to be inside the house doing this meeting gathering this information and you need to say sir ma'am do you mind if I look out each window I need to kind of see where you're going to be doing most of your living is inside I need to see out these windows I need to get some views and it's okay take pictures but especially if it's a new house and they're not quite finished take pictures looking out the window and seeing what the client uh, will be seeing and then again make sure about the privacy um, what are their preferences do they prefer natural looking landscapes or do they prefer formal looking landscapes are they more of a uh, um, English formal garden or do they want just a natural looking uh, landscape what type of maintenance do they want is the uh, is the husband or wife are they going to be the one that mows the yard are they going to be the one that spreads the mulch are they going to be doing the pine needling the fertilizing all of that themselves you find out this information and you can design um, with with different types of mulch you know that doesn't need you know, maybe they need, uh, maybe they need like a graveled mulch that they're only going to have to do every so many years. If the wife or the husband is going to be cutting the yard, you know, maybe design with more plant material and bed space and, and, and a lot less grass. Um, so find out that information. Find out their favorite plants. You know, what is the husband's favorite plant, the wife's favorite plants, but don't forget what their least favorite plant is. You may be asking them, hey, what's your favorite plant? And they'll say, you know, Indian hawthorn, Laura Petalum, yeah, I really like azaleas. And, uh, you know, you design the, the project with these plants in mind, but you go to present the preliminary design and you've got, let's say, privet to do some uh, screening in the back and they absolutely hate privet you know so always find out what plants that they don't like because you don't want to show up with a preliminary design and start talking about um, plants that they don't like 
Ask them favorite and least. Least favorite. Um, questionnaires, and this is what I like to do. They can be sent prior to the interview and uh, gone over. They can have it and go over it before they meet you or have them send it back to you uh, before you meet them. And the, Today, the way websites are, you can send that electronically. You can have the form electronically that you email it to them or send them a link to your website where they can answer this stuff. And um, you're getting information prior to meeting them. So you can kind of have a feel of what they would want. They've called you. You send them that questionnaire. They send it back to you. You've looked on Geodata. You've looked on Google Maps. You can kind of see or... or uh, yeah, Google Maps where you can pull up the front of the house. You can kind of see what it's like. You're getting a feel of the, the, the client prior to meeting them. You're getting a feel of the property before you visit the property. So you're getting all this information that doesn't take long to do. And these questionnaires can also help you figure out, hey, this is not the client that I want to work for, too. You don't want to, to get spend a lot of time on something where you're not capable of doing it or you, you just, you're not clicking with the client. So, the design fees and contract. You need, to, uh, you need to make sure you let them know what your fees are and have them sign a contract. I also like to see uh, a down payment on my design. Um, Basically, with, with the research I do on the property before I meet the client, I kind of know what it's going to cost me totally. If I'm uh, just strictly doing a landscape design for them, if it's design-build, again, that's one of these situations where you're, you're factoring the cost of the design into the installation. So you've got to let them know, um, you know what it is. You know, and some clients feel comfortable uh, doing the design-build that you've built that repertoire and, and and confidence with them that they they're going to want you to do the uh, the installation as well. But if you're if you're just the designer, um, you need to make sure you're getting that getting that getting that payment and getting that down payment. Um, again, we talked earlier about the next appointment. You need to make sure that you have that next appointment set in stone. If you're there on a Tuesday and you're meeting them next Friday, write it down. Actually show show them where you're filling it in on your calendar. I even like having on the back of a business card sometimes on the back, kind of like they do at doctor's offices. Next meeting, your next appointment is next Friday at 5.30 when, uh, when Mr. Smith gets home. And after you leave, always make sure you follow up with a phone call uh, a few days later to see if they had forgotten anything. Mr. and Ms. Smith, um, you know, we're working on your preliminary design here, and we just want to make sure, is there anything that you think you might have left out that, you know, we want to incorporate in the design at the stage where we're at? This is going to save you money. And it'll either be yes, sir, or no, sir, you know, everything's fine. We'll see you next Friday at the appointment that you've already scheduled. And then again, send a thank you card. Mr. and Ms. Smith, we'd like to thank you for meeting uh, uh meeting with me Tuesday afternoon. Look forward to seeing you next Friday. All right. Well, this is kind of what I did when I was full-time at Elite Landscape Service. Uh, I had a sheet that explained the design services. I had that design questionnaire where I could email out. I emailed it out, and this is several years ago, guys, so this was, I emailed it out in a PDF that they would print and I would basically read it there or they could mail it back to me. I had a contract and then I had a design estimate. And basically what we're going to look at now is just my design estimate and the questionnaire that I had actually sent to the people. So here was the top uh, part of my uh, estimate that I give the, the client. And you can see up here I had my business card stapled to the top right hand corner and I would also leave several cards with them you know two or three extra uh, some of that contact information has changed guys there's no longer a PO box for my uh, company um, and I know mom and dad you know still running the elite landscape service um, they've changed the web address and uh, web address and they've changed the PO box um, 
and uh, you know my cell phone there is no longer uh, my same phone number but you know um, kind of had to we ran out of business cards one day so we had to get something really quick you know that's something you always need to keep plenty of so I would definitely have designed that a little different uh, but we was in a rush to get that done but let's take a look at the uh, the estimate I had all the information about the client their name address city state zip their email address uh, if it was a company you know that I was working for if they had a web address their home phone work phone job name so if it was Mr. Miss Smith, it could be Smith Residence. I'm always naming my uh, my jobs, job location. Hey, if it was in a certain neighborhood that you know you were classifying all your work in, and just you know anything else other that you may uh, want to put in there. But the description of work: job at hand calls for providing a landscape design for the property listed above. Details will define shrub beds, identify plant materials, outline soil preparation, and provide for proper drainage. We shall also provide all a materials list that specifies quantity, sizes, and specific qualities of the materials needed for the implementation of the design. A written estimate shall be provided to explain the cost of the implementation that we would give them at the end. During the design presentation, we shall provide information on the plant materials and hardscape materials so that the client will understand the color and texture of all plants and materials used. Upon completion of the project, we shall also provide elite basics for landscape investors. A guide on landscape establishment and maintenance. Highlights include fertilization, irrigation scheduling, pruning, and weed control. And upon final approval of the landscape design, we can proceed to irrigation design if desired. So... We were telling them what we were going to do. This was a description of the work. We're letting them know. And we were basically, we were giving a lot of free information with our design too. I spent a lot of time doing this Elite Basics for investors, which basically told them it was a pamphlet that we prevented, you know, printed from the computer, put in a nice little binder uh, that told them how to care for their landscape uh, after we designed and installed it. And... To begin with, I would always say the areas of design work to be done. Hey, was it the total property? Am I doing front, back of the house, left and right side? Or am I just going to do a front foundation design? Or am I just going to do the front and the right? So I would check these areas of design so that the client would know where I was just going to focus at. And then at the bottom, the design services to perform. Is it the complete package? That means am I going to do a planting plan, am I going to do uh, a landscape lighting plan, irrigation plan, are they going to get digital perspectives? So it was basically all based on all these services here that you could check. If they checked all of them, it would say, hey, the complete package. Do I need to do the property layout or the survey? You can do that. Do they just want digital perspectives? Sometimes if it's just a front foundation planning that you're doing, you can do that easily with Pro Landscape or one of the other digital imaging uh, uh, software programs. Uh, a planting plan. Are we doing landscape lighting? Well, landscape lighting can also be done in Pro Landscape. Irrigation can be done in Pro Landscape. Do they want the proposal for installation? Yes, you know, because we did a lot of design build. I did a lot of design work just by myself for extra money uh, on the side but you know when working for mom and dad <coughs> you know it was always design build consultation consultation would be are you just going to give them the design and do you want do they want you to be a consultant when they hire the landscape contractor to do it so we hereby propose to provide design services complete in accordance with specifications above for the estimated sum of x amount of dollars Client will or will not provide a plot of the property. Acceptance of proposal. The above price specification conditions are satisfactory and hereby accepted. You are authorized to do the work specified. Payment will be made as outlined below. Note, Elite Landscape Service Nursery may withdraw this proposal if not accepted within so many business days. So, we would have the title. I mean the total, not title, but the total price up there where we hereby propose. We would note the deposit received and the balance due, estimate given by myself, and then the client would always sign there. And of course, I was always proud to stamp everything that I did. Landscape contractor, irrigation contractor, and yes, 
the uh, the contractor stamp has changed um, now that the new licensing law for landscape contractors is here. So I would always leave with that deposit. You know, if my design, if I was going to charge them $1,500 to do a complete package, um, or if I was going to charge them $300 just to do some digital imaging perspectives, I would always try to leave, uh, you know, I'd like to get half. Um, and, and, and basically, you're going to find out real quick if they're going to hire you. Um, or you're going to find out real quick if you do or don't want to work for them. But if you, if you are going to do the work, I always recommend get half of the design fee up front because you don't want to get started. It, you know, and before that next meeting, they call and say, look, we're going to get somebody else. They're serious if they give you a deposit. They're very serious about it. And basically, is it, can we get a lien on a property for doing a, for doing a design work? Uh, I don't know. I've never, never tried that. I've never really been experienced with that or known somebody that's had to do that. But if we're installing an irrigation system or we're installing plant materials, we can actually file a lien on the property um, to try to get our money. Yes, we can't go and cut out the backflow if they don't pay us or, or go and steal the plants back because they haven't paid us. We can't do that. But we can, we've got a little more ground to stand on uh, when we've got materials on the job. We could do all this design work. And they say, nah, we don't want to do it. You know, you know, you know, the good old handshake sometimes may not work here. Get that money, protect yourself. So now we're looking at the questionnaire. And this is something that you can email up front and let the client um, fill it out prehand. Like I said, you can send them a link. They can fill it out online. You know, these surveys... Uh, I forget the, the new online survey thing that you can send out. All these questions can be on that, and it goes right, you know, they fill it out and send it right back to you. But, you know, always get their personal data, name, spouse's name, both of them's occupation, the address, and ways to contact them. And then, again, list their children. You know, and they don't have to list their names. Just say, you know, I got, uh, you know, I got Eric, Brent, and Joe. You know, I got three boys, their ages and their hobbies. Why do we want to know their hobbies? Well, one may be a gamer and stays inside all day, but two of them might be uh, uh, very athletic. One likes basketball and the other likes baseball. Have an open space in the backyard they can play catch. If one of them's in the basketball, you're the designer. Put in a basketball court for the client. Show them that this would be good for them. Um, you know, mom and dad's going to try to make the kids happy too. What type of professional landscaping services have you done used before? What helped you decide to contact my company? What would be the best ways for us to help you? And what do you want to accomplish uh, by the completion of your project? Again, these questions they know the answer to. I mean, they're they're deep down inside the client. You got to help bring that information out because if they if if it's not asked, they're not going to tell you. Have you considered how much you would like to invest in your landscape? And trust me, they know. They know they've got five thousand dollars to spend, or that they've got fifteen, or if they've got twenty, if we're lucky to get those kind of jobs. They know. And if it's fifteen hundred dollars, this might be whoa, fifteen hundred dollars, and you're wanting design, plant material, and installation to be total fifteen hundred dollars. It may not be a job that you want to take. Are you interested in doing the whole job or doing a little bit of it in phases? Can you supply a copy of the survey? Are there any easements on the property? Then, for the utilities, drainage, and maintenance, have them call you loco. They can do this before you meet them on site. They can give them the phone number, and the phone number may have changed or it may be different you know, where you're located, but have them come and mark all the utilities. That way, when you come and do your site visit, you can note it for your site inventory and analysis. Um, jot down where the electric phone water is. You know, the electric comes in on the right side of the house. Gas comes directly uh, to the left of the house. Write all this stuff down. Are there any drainage lines on the property? Uh, if so, where are they at? Are there any gutters on the house? Do you have any wet areas in your lawn? 
they they may know that they have wet long you know wet areas but they can't quite remember they just remember um you know somewhere that it stays wet a little bit you could have a dry summer and they forgot about it um so you need to find out where that wet area is do you have erosion problem on your property if so where is it located do you plan on maintaining the property yourself if you use a loan service what is the frequency of visits what do you like or dislike about the service? Would you be interested in weekly maintenance? Are you interested in lighting? Uh, is there floodlights on the house? Is there an existing street light near the house? Do you need fencing? They may not think they need fencing until they're asked, do they need fencing? A lot of these guys can be upsells, especially if you're doing design build. Do you want to light the driveway? Do you need to do the visual screening? What are you going to do about storage? Where's the trash cans going to be located? Uh, do you need a freestanding shed? Or are you going to put stuff under the deck, under the house? Are you going to burn firewood? Um, uh, do you, is your garage attached? What's going to be in the garage? Other. And again, your favorite plants. Plants to avoid. <coughs> is there tree work that needs to be done? And then is there existing plants on the property that you need to take note of? And then indicate whether you have or desire to have the following. And I've listed everything that I possibly could think, and there's some on the next page. Uh, but again, these could be all upsells to you, especially if you're doing design build. Um, you know, even putting green. You know, the, the husband could be an ad, advocate golfer that goes out all the time. Well, he may just want a place to go do um, some putting green, a fire pit. You know, everybody likes to sit around the fire on the weekends. Uh, do they want warm, cool season grasses? You know, all this, you know, could be upsells for us. And it helps the client to decide kind of what they're hiring you for. Irrigation. Are you inter interested in an irrigation system? We hope so. Are there any changes that need to be done to your present irrigation system? And that's always going to be yes if you're doing a, uh, a landscape renovation. If you're redoing the front foundation planting or if you're adding a bed in the front yard, yes, we're going to have to make changes to the irrigation system uh, that's currently there. Are you interested in automatic rain shutoff sensor or other water management options for your irrigation? Again, upcharge them. They already have a system. You're doing irrigation and landscape design type work. Throw these in and upsell, uh, upsell yourself. Every dollar you put in the pocket is a dollar you take home. And then miscellaneous design functions. What do you do in your spare time? What are your favorite colors? You may have a, a wife that hates the color yellow. And then you plant yellow pansies or forsythia. And they're, they're going to hate you. What is your favorite season and why? What do you like best about your yard? What do you like least about your yard? How much time can you devote to your yard? What views in or out do you want to screen? What views in or out do you want to emphasize? What do you enjoy uh, doing in the garden? What don't you enjoy doing in the garden? Do you have a compost pile? Do you use your yard or patio for entertaining? If so, how do you use it for entertaining? Do you have existing outdoor furniture? If so, what's the style and color? You don't want to put in a mulch or a shrub color uh, or a hardscape color that's going to clash with, with their furniture. Do you want any existing pavement, terrace, deck, or patio expanded? And how many cars do you own? Again, that goes back to children. They may have a 13, 14, and a 15-year-old, or a 12-year-old, 14, and 15-year-old. Going to be driving in a couple years. They're going to be the uh, room for these cars. Do you own a boat, trailer, or camper? Do you want guest parking? Do you want a turnaround driveway? Are the kids or grandparents' cars in the near future? Is there any allergies in the family? If so, please list them. And then how long do you plan on living in your system? <coughs> if it's five years and you're designing an irrigation system, is it worth it for them to get that second meter to save money on the sewer? Probably not if they're only going to be there two or three years. Maybe they're upgrading their landscape so that they can sell the house quicker and, and make a bigger return on their investment when they do move. <coughs> and then additional notes uh, about the property that uh, that they can fill in on this this worksheet or questionnaire uh, to send to you. And then always have on the last page a place 
for them to do some sketching or a place for me to do some sketching depends on if you're filling it out there at the kitchen table or if they're sending it uh, uh, back to you prior to their visit and the end guys i hope this helped out um, the client interview can be a fun thing but it can also be a stressful thing so if not, hope you enjoyed the lecture, and if you did, great. Uh, if not, let me know. I'll try to work on it again, but uh, uh, I think this was some very good information uh, about the client interview, and I'll see you in the next lecture. Thanks.